this is Daisy Joy at Adventure Acres. How are you doing? What's up? <laughs> I have done some videos over the weekend kind of documenting all the weather weirdness that we've been having. Yeah, it, I've got videos of everything from wind and hail and snow. So yeah, it's been eventful this weekend. Um, I'm hoping that the weirdest part of the weather turbulence is over, but we're expecting more snow this week. So that's coming up. <laughs> um, I am glad to report that it's sunny outside. It's, it, it's pretty outside. Unfortunately, it's still cold. It's cold and very muddy now. Um, so it's, it's gonna be a while before I get to be outside because there's still snow in the forecast. It's still supposed to be cold this week. This is so unusual. I mean, I'm looking at the pictures from a couple years back and it's so green and there's flowers blooming and our trees are all budded out and there's apple blossoms and and the, it's, it's barely starting up here. It's good that it hasn't been, that we haven't had a warm spell and then gone back to this cold spell because our orchard would be shot if that was the case. And I'm really hoping that when it does start to warm up that it doesn't go back to freeze a hard freeze because I'm a little nervous about that. But, you know, it whatever the weather's gonna do, it's gonna do. There's not much I can do about that. But, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm so ready for it to be nice out. You know, I live on a farm so I can play outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm wet. I'm ready for sunshine and going outside in the grass and <sighs> to get my hands in the dirt and having more interesting backdrops than I mean I'm in my room right now and yeah I, I've, I've told people I haven't moved in yet it's bare it's very bare <laughs> but I'm, I'm taking a little time to put my feet up and uh, I usually in the afternoons I try to take a little breather put my feet up and relax for a little bit and kind of collect my thoughts and I figure hey I'll bring you along while I'm collecting my thoughts and just do a video about them so this is kind of what I'm thinking about lately uh, well for starters we had an interesting message recently I kind of missed it initially in my messages um, this happens a lot I get a lot of messages and so um, I got a message and I missed it sorry about that I had to pause I was getting a phone call um, so I got a message and um, there was someone and they were trying to help someone else find a home for their duckies they are they had two ducks that needed to be rehomed and uh, they had a Cayuga Drake and a Mallard Girl Duck. Okay, anybody else? I'm just going to put this out there. Uh, chickens get to be roosters and hens, but ducks have to be drakes and just ducks. That's just weird. I think there should be a word for girl ducks. Equal opportunities for ducks. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so my existential quandary uh, side. Uh, they, they have these two ducks, and they need a home for them. Um, I, I, you know, I'm really interested in the possibility, and I sent a message back, and I, I haven't heard back yet about what, I mean, they, they were set a deadline for April 15th, and so the deadline has passed. I didn't get the message because it was it's been really busy. <laughs> April is, you know, we had people from out of town, so there were messages going back and forth all through, you know, it got buried down. And so I didn't find it until, again, until yesterday. And so then, you know, I didn't know if it was too late or not, but I sent a message back and said that we'd be interested in learning more about it and, and, uh, getting some more information. So that's a possibility. Um, we, you know, we've been talking about getting some more ducks. And it's not, I mean, if I went out to go buy two ducks right now, that's probably not what I would get. But there are perks to, you know, 
I, I, I kind of like the idea of maybe doing something different, you know. So, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see how, if that's the case, if, if we're going to add them in. Um, it's interesting proposition. I, I still feel bad because we had a Cayuga. And I was really looking forward to seeing how how it grew up and, you know, watching how it developed and molted. Uh, the, if you're not familiar with Cayugas, they're a black duck. And in the sunshine, their their feathers shine green. They're really pretty. And um, it's really interesting because over time, their feathers you know, lose color, they, they turn white. And so they go from being a completely black duck that shines green to being a, a black and white duck with kind of dappled white feathers in the mix. And then they transition to be a white duck at the end, you know, so it's a really interesting sort of duck. And, you know, I, I, I like Cayugas. I like the idea of them. I, um, mallards, you know, they're kind of, I, I, I don't really know, I don't have much experience with them. I, I know a lot about them, I've done a lot of research, um, but, you know, I, I know some of them can fly because they're interesting like that. They're not the heavy-bodied, more domesticated ducks. And so, it's an interesting kind of combination. I, I, I'm open to it. So, we'll, we'll see if we hear back. They may have already found a home by now, but um, I guess the situation was that the, the Homeowners Association, where they were, said that they couldn't have them anymore. So that's kind of a bummer, um, you know. Uh, but the, the cool thing about the docks that they had mentioned is that they're very well socialized because they were essentially these, um, these people's pets. And so they were really well socialized. That'd be kind of neat. But, um, so that's, that's one of the things. Another thing is that I have not even started any seeds yet. I don't ha have any seeds bought. I do not even have an idea of what seeds we're going to plant this year. <laughs> Which, normally, I would feel completely behind being at the end of almost, or ha past the halfway point of April. And not even knowing what we're going to plant. Except that it's still flipping winter outside. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so, you know, I can cut myself a little bit of slack. But um, the thing is that part of the reason we haven't decided on what we're going to plant yet is that we haven't really decided how we're going to set up our gardening situation um, for this year. We have a big garden plot that's back behind Rufus's pen, his, his dog run out there. And it has, it's a strawberry patch and it's also a, you know, it's been largely a tomato garden. We haven't really had a lot of luck with the other vegetables, partly because I'm tall. <laughs> I'm six feet tall. So when I do the weeding in a garden plot like that, I'm, I'm, you know, bending myself over in half and I am in the heat of the summer, when I stand back up, I get really dizzy. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for something that's a little bit more ergonomically friendly, a little more doable. Um, I had thought about doing something like, like a, like a berm, I think it's called, like a, like a raised mound and then planting my plants on that. And, um, you know, so that it's a little more accessible and I don't have to f get down on my head, stand on my head to try to weed. Um, or also one of the other options that we have talked about and we're going to do, you know, whatever we figure out on planting in it is doing a raised bed sort of situation. My dad actually made my mom this really neat raised bed out of pallets and it, you know, she has a really great, she has a better garden than I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's really neat and um so there is there are plans in the works of setting up uh a raised bed and we we have to find a, a you know decide on the location and get it built and of course we haven't had a chance to do that because it's been yucky outside among other things 
But um, so that's one of the things that we're talking about is what seeds we're going to do, how we're going to set up our gardening areas uh, anew, and, you know, kind of figuring out the details kind of stuff. Another thing is that we have a lot of recon work outside. We're going to tackle some of the fallen branches, the you know trees and and landscaping because I guess you know you know one of the things that if I had to pick a theme for this year of, of what I want to accomplish here it would be that we could polish the place that we could you know inside and out you know finish all the loose ends and and kind of put it a little bit more to you know finished state of things where it's a little you know it makes more sense <laughs> um I, I i really do like the work that we've done outside uh we made a compost bin at the end of the you know right before we went to the conference um outside and i'm excited to kind of get started with that i'm we're, we're planning on kind of rearranging our setup with how we have our animals we have right now we our rabbits are in the backyard area and i would like to move them out where the you know the the run and cups that run and cup run and coop <laughs> situation is out there <sighs> the run and coops out there i would like to put the bunnies somewhere in the mix out there partly because there is a utility light there and so it makes it handy in the evenings if our evening in the winter even it gets dark outside and then having the rabbits in the backyard is kind of tricky because they're back there and it's dark and you know the kids are the ones that feed the rabbits and so it's not as much fun to go out and so we kind of go out ourselves but if the rabbits are out where the utility light is in the winter when it gets dark earlier it's not as much of an issue it's easier to see everything it's easier to take care of all the stuff there is a plug in there for utilities for the rabbits it's it's a handy setup um, and also they would be closer to the compost bin which would be handy because our rabbits are our fertilizer production crew and we you know uh, use what they produce as part of our compost and it helps to really add a lot of great good stuff for the compost <laughs> our bunnies um, so we would like to rearrange that another thing is that we would like to kind of look into food preservation options you know we have lots of apples here uh, ideally as hoping that we have a, a decent crop last year we had a hard freeze kind of right after the beginning of the year after it uh, after it bloomed we had a really cold cold snap and our apples this year they rotted before they fell off the tree or before they were ripe or anything last year and so that was disappointing um, and uh, you know, there are a lot of resources that are already in place here for production value, and we just need to, you know, kind of get get our game together with preservation. We have a dehydrator. I would like to learn more about that this year and kind of get practiced with it and kind of get started. And, um, you know, there are, are things that we're looking forward to doing. But, um, so those are a few things that are kind of on our radar this week. And my MRI is in a couple of days, day after tomorrow. So um, another thing that I have been kind of toying around with, um, my hair is really long, like super hair. I'll see if I can even get it all in the screen. Like I can, I can wrap it around my, like oh, this is the end. <laughs> I have a lot of hair. <coughs> Excuse me. A great, <coughs> a great deal of hair. And I like having long hair. It's fun. It, I, I enjoy having long hair. You know, like in, in Little Women, you know, Joe talks about how her hair is her one great beauty. I like having long hair. Um, 
but it's starting to be a problem <laughs> in the homesteader situation. Um, I keep it up a lot. I, I'm literally, uh, right now as I'm relaxing, I've literally let my hair down. Uh, I usually have it up in a braid and in a bun because it gets in the way. Um, I almost caught my hair on fire the other day <laughs> because it's long enough that it hangs down where the burner is, which is not ideal. <laughs> it's also long enough that if I might have a lot of problem with rubber bands breaking, uh, my rubber band breaks and then my braid comes for unfurled and you know, it, uh, the other day my, I was having lunch with my son and the rubber band broke, um, and my braid came, you know, pew, 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 you know, unwinding and it like right into my food at the end of my hair was right in my food. And so, <laughs> so I think it is time for a shortening I've got nine miles of hair and I'm not saying that I wanted to go like drastically, you know, pixie cut or anything like that, but I'm, I'm plotting some shorterness uh, to happen. Uh, partly because I, I have also had, you know, it's a lot less hair than I used to have. I mean, this is a lot of hair altogether. But, I mean, this is about half of what I would have had before, but I had the thyroiditis, and so it kind of is a little thinner. So I think maybe if it's a little shorter, it might, might uh, you know, have a little more body to it. And so, uh, yeah, hair is a consideration when you're on a homestead, because also when you're, like, out doing chores and you go to pick up an egg off the ground, if your hair tie comes undone and you're dragging your braid in the duck poop, not cool. Not glamorous. Duck poop is not glamorous. <laughs> but, uh, so I'd like to keep my hair out of the duck poop at, at the very minimum. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I hope, I don't know uh, if that'll happen tonight or sometime this week or if I'm just too attached to my hair because it's been fun growing it. I haven't had an official haircut since 2011, I think. Uh, Mr. Adventure trimmed it for me once, like shortly after we moved here and I started having the same problems and it started because my hair does grow really fast too. And so I had him trim it so that it wasn't getting into everything, but it, it's starting to come back. So I might have to go a little bit shorter. Uh, you know, not, not, it'll still be long because, well, okay. Like I'm having my MRI later this week. And so if I had like, you know, like cheekbone length, there's air. Okay. There's air that blows in the MRI tubes. And one of my first MRIs that I did, I didn't know it was going to be, I was going to have to have an extra MRI. And so I went for the extra MRI. There was this one little hair that was loose from the, from my braid. And it was blowing all over my face. And I have to stay in the tube and lay perfectly still while this hair is blowing all over my face. This is just like three little hairs just messing with me. Mm -mm. So it's got to be at least long enough to fully put back and out of the way <laughs> when I have my MRIs. Because that is not okay. It's like a form of torture. If they employ that at Guantanamo, there would be no more crime. It's rough. <laughs> but anyway, so those are just a few of the things that we're kind of talking about this week. And um, I'll be, hopefully I'll be able to, after my appointments, I'll be able to know more and, and be able to do more writing for the page on my Facebook page. But um, in the meantime, I've been having fun doing videos. It's kind of fun to get acquainted with the idea of doing videos. I, I feel more relaxed about it, obviously. But <laughs> but um, I, uh, I'm looking forward to kind of having more answers and spring and all sorts of fun things. So, so that's my update for right now. Just kind of touching base and... Hope everything's going great where you are. And I guess I'm signing off for now. Bye.